Warning. The following program contains material which may not be suitable for young children or sensitive viewers. Sorry. When you're see the deal is this, when you're rich, you get to live on golf courses and 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 well, not even rich necessarily when you have money and when you have a PhD, which my mother has. And uh, you, that's what this episode is actually about, is my mom, the doctor. So, there you are. So welcome to Jay and B on the Rocks. I'm I, Jay. Jay, me. He's Jay. He, he'll be your bartender. Bartender, me. Bartender. Yes. I'm actually. My name is B, and I'll be your editor. And we wanted to present this fine show, Jay and B on the Rocks. Yes. And uh, we're going to start it off uh, real quickly here with a little drink. So this first drink that we're making is going to be called Doctor Pat's Punch. Now, now there's a reason for this actually, and that is because this episode is about my mom's graduation. With a Dr. Pat's Punch, what you want to put in is about an ounce and a half of Southern Comfort. Oops, that's too much. Oh, I better make this one equal so that B doesn't feel slighted. So we'll pour in, say, uh, four ounces of this. I know that I've overdone it a little bit, but that's okay because this is a show which glorifies the excessive use of alcohol, responsible ale. use of alcohol and ginger ale. So just pretend that we're bigger guys and we need bigger drinks, okay? So, um, then I'm going to t taste this. I would pronounce that as distinctly educational. Dr. Pat's Punch, appropriate drink, because this episode, we're celebrating uh, a very special graduation. Uh, uh, Dr. Pat. Dr. Pat is Jay's mom. Yes, my, my old mom. She graduated. Yes. Well, she's not old. Your mother, the doctor. My Mother the Doctor. That's what this episode is called, as you may have seen earlier in that little title that B, the editor, put in through his special means. And what you're seeing again, even as we speak. Yeah. yeah. A toast, then, to your mother, the doctor. Right on. And uh, uh, let's, by way of uh, introduction, I guess we should show you. Yeah, this is her right here. I am a white American female Euro... American, educator, Kentuckian. Dr. Pat does not exist in a vacuum. Yes, indeed, she, she is married to one William Harold Nickel Jr. Now, oddly enough, everybody calls him Nick, okay? Nick that's, Nickel. Yeah, that's because it's, now this is not a joke, it's his nickname. Um, Nickname. But yeah, yeah, do you get it? It's, it's humor, yet real, because this is a real television program. Anyway, here he is. Yes, that Nick Nickel, a difficult fellow to contend with. Yep. And now we wanted to show you just a scene or, or two from the graduation itself. So watch this. <laughs> Very young, very young. Your instruction and administration and dissertation 
a comparison of student outcomes on performance assessment in multiple choice test types by gender, race, and SES. Wow, look, she's got about the longest she dissertation mis title of anybody there. Well, she does, and I think she misspelled the word sex. I think this was supposed to be S-E-X instead, instead of S-E-S. Oh, okay. okay. Gender, gender, race, and sex. sex. Oh, well, there she is. On the count of three, we'll holler. One, two, three. Mom! is called a slow, comfortable screw. Uh, but wait, actually, because my mom is a non-traditional student, um, actually, I was thinking we would not make that. We would make a, a quick, uncomfortable screw um, because, you know, she's a funky young... Now, listen to that. Those are the bells of time passing by or something. Um, what you want to do is start with about an ounce and a half, again, of southern comfort because my mom is somewhat of a southern bell, you know, type person, I guess. Um, so now I don't want you to, to get confused about this thing. I'm not making any kind of Oedipal connection here, you know, by making a, a, a quick, uncomfortable screw. Rather, 
Um, what, what happened here, the, the kind of thought process, what little thought process went into this was that uh, we wanted to make a drink with more southern comfort in it and we had some orange juice. So. I would pronounce that as uncomfortably good. So uh, now it's, it's time for a little more education, since this is an educational show. A toast uh, to that, then. A toast to education. Education in Kentucky, Indiana, yeah. and the whole Midwest. Midwest. Look at those numbers on your screen. They probably mean Ooh. nothing to you. Um, but, but what you should understand is that what you're looking at is like um, per pupil spending in Kentucky and Indiana. Well, just a number of different and, and parameters. Just, yeah, just a bunch of parameters. Um, the, they, they, they might mean nothing to you, except that you should see, you should notice that, you know, Indiana, Kentucky, we're kind of in the lower middle part in terms of spending. But look at those numbers now that just flashed on there. In term, that's graduation rates for Kentucky. Well, that's, they're, they're 49th. 49th, 48th, something like that. 48th, you, yeah. you don't remember what it is? I, 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 can't, I can't read it because um, I can't see. Now, my mom has a number of, of very fascinating theories about uh, the quality of education in our country and the failings of education and all of that stuff. Fascinating. Um, fascinating. So here's, here's a little bit of, of that stuff. Actually, the 10 most pressing problems facing education, educationers in the U.S. Those educationers today in the United States. List the 10 most pressing problems facing the, the United States today. Well, civil rights. Certainly. Okay, civil rights. Sure. All right, uh, hate crime. Mm -hmm. That goes along with Amen. civil rights. We have teachers who are out there practicing anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. Wait, AIDS, are, we, are we up to the number AIDS three? Crisis. AIDS crisis. Okay. Yeah. AIDS. The way homosexuality. Homosexuality. Oh. Women in combat. Women in combat. What drugs are okay and what drugs aren't? <laughs> yeah. What yeah. tobacco is okay? Is it okay for me to drink this drink on this? Well, stage? it certainly is, and and uh, I. Cheers. Here's to that. Okay. But then, what but then there's other drugs, like, um, oh, so the, the number one most pressing problem facing educators today in, in this country, the inability of doctors to count to 10. There are people in state government and in federal government mm -hmm. who will say, we don't want intelligent citizens. We don't want people who understand the economy. We don't want people who know the way government works. We don't want the, the people who, who understand, who have an historical understanding of the way things operate. Mm -hmm. They are our worst enemy. I'm gonna make, we're gonna mix a drink for, for the doctor. This, is, this drink is going to be called Dr. Nichols Knuckle Sucker. And uh, what you want to do, you want to add about an ounce and a half of Mezcal. Now this particular brand is, is Monte Alban, but, uh, but you know, any brand will do you because we don't do those funky um, product endorsements on this television program. So add about- Don't put the worm in there. Okay, no worm for the doctor. So, put about an ounce and a half of mezcal, which is kind of like tequila, but a, according to the, the, uh, the little flyer which was attached to this, it's not the same exactly. But we'll but find out. But it does have a worm. Yeah. Worm. Yeah. Worm. Worm. Worm time. Worm, worm to, to the, your mother. Yeah, worm to your mother. The doctor. <laughs> the doctor. Worm so, your yeah. mother. You, by the way, you should be making this in your own home with us even if you're not a doctor. Because, you know, this is a program which glorifies the responsible use of alcohol by teaching you, the home viewer, to mix a variety. Excuse me, doctor. I almost had my train of thought interrupted, and you know how dangerous that can be. Some kind of clear 
um, sweet carbonated beverage is the next thing you want to add. Add about uh, three ounces of it, I'd say. And then you want to stir it around like this, kind of swish as it were. That's the, that's the academic term for it. And then you pass it to your favorite doctor and let her take a sip. How would you pronounce that? <laughs> Wait. It tastes like something I've tasted before. It kind of tastes like... Um... Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Nichols Knuckle Sucker. I want to taste it, cer it certainly after that pronouncement. Mm. You know, I would pronounce that as distinctly um, soulful. Yeah. Ooh, man, this is unreal. That, um, that's not good. <laughs> what? Oh, that's nasty. That is it, Joe. That's it. This is the problem. What if you were to add more of this? This is the problem. Really? No. So, this uh, following is, is now that we've had a, a couple of drinks, and, and uh, although this is simulated alcohol, you know, because we would it's never... It's time for a sober analysis of, of my mother's dissertation. Sober. Sober. My mom, the doctor. Dissertation. Ask me about my dissertation. Yeah, what was that dissertation of yours oh, about? Oh, would you like to know about my dissertation? Oh, sure. <laughs> For years, we have said that our tests, that those measures that we use of human intellectuality, if you will, are biased. There have been scoring gaps for years between blacks and whites, Mm -hmm. between males and females, mm -hmm. and between affluent and more poverty-stricken students in test scores. Mm -hmm. So along comes all this reform in education, big-time reform. One of, the, one of the most important parts of that reform is changing our tests. Everybody's mm -hmm. going, oh, we need these new tests. We need these new... But nobody's asking whether they're going to solve the, the bias issue problem. Mm -hmm. Bias issue problem? My research indicated that at the eighth grade level, new test forms showed the same gaps by race. Hmm. Whites and blacks, the gap was the same. Yeah. Um, by economics, mm -hmm. gaps were the same. But interestingly, by gender, females were advantaged. What this says is that the new, the new kinds of tests that are being used to evaluate student achievement um, would indicate that females outscore males. We've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. A toast. A to, toast. A toast to uh, education, education and graduation. And graduation. And, and all of that funky stuff. Click, yeah. click, 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 click. You know, um, bang your glass long, yeah. glasses long together. Long bang enough. your glasses long and hard. No. The point here is bang that what glass. what graduation would be complete without a, some celebration? As some well. celebration, yes. And in, and in light of that, in view of it, in fact, in in particular, uh, we wanted to introduce a segment of our TV show to you. Mm -hmm. This is what they call black and chicken. Yeah. Oh, well, that's is, how you make it. Yeah. Any chicken that gets burned. Uh huh. Uh, you just charge more and call it blackened. Okay. Ooh, look, it's my photogenic doctoral mother. Hang on a minute. What, what do you think about, about having a sister who's a doctor now? Um, I've always wanted to be a doctor in the family. And I have something wrong with my foot. Pet really? Me? Yes. Oh, Dr. No. Nichols, Dr. Nichols, can you fix my foot? 
<laughs> it hit something heal wrong. By, heal thyself. <laughs> With all the brothers and sisters, please stand. Hooray for long suffering sisters and brothers everywhere. So, uh, what does it feel like to have a daughter with a doctorate degree? Oh, I like that. Yeah? I'm very proud. Did you ever think that you would have one? No. So, what do you think about having a doctor mom? Well, like I was telling Dad after the celebration festivities, I think we have helped to create an education monster. <laughs> Yeah, there's a price. No, no, I don't think so. <gasps> what is well, this? this is, it's, oh, I want me. graduation Look pictures. Look at this. It. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow, well, knobs. <laughs> been much educated, I have learned. My parents raised me good, taught me what a good education can do for one's quality of life, quantity of bread, frequency of good sex, and the like. Ain't nothing to it. Post-literate, that's where I's at. Can't spell for shit. Can't finish anything, but sure can plan out the whole campaign. Know no, how to fix, fix my stereo, stereo but, but don't. don't. That's cause eyes affected and effected infused with the hot chocolate morality of the city and the times. What you gonna do when you get out? Go up to Naptown? Get a job as a clerk in a lawyer's office? As a programmer for the insurers of the car you can't afford, but have to buy? How about Silicon Valley? I hear it's real west out there. Or Istanbul, or New Orleans. Where do you go after Bloomington, the eternal city? I've seen so many good heads, good eggs laid to waste by the forced decision. It's over, Chucko. You can't go home, but you can't just go. It's over. Somehow you think that the appeal of the studentine ghetto will wear down and off as you reach predicted maturity. Maybe. Maybe not. Cut off the soles of your shoes, climb a tree, and learn to play the flute. Lounge by the shores, naked and carefree. Have late breakfasts at the uptown. Drink more. Smoke more. Plow fields. Peter Pan was right. Don't do it. Don't grow up. Don't leave. You can stay here, deep in the ivory womb. You could get a job as a painter, or start another paper or something. Maybe you can get that recording contract and still live out on Smithville Road. There's, There's this, this great flick, flick where the protagonists muse on the best years of their lives. It was, it was their college days. days. If, if you're, you're even halfway happy, this is as good as it's going to get. Stay here. Don't, don't leave. leave. You could get a job dishwashing at the spoon. Get back to your writing. Buy that old beat-up all-metal electric guitar and learn a few power chords. What, what more do you, do you want for an adequate quality of life? life? You, you can, can live, live like a monarch here on six lousy, lousy bucks, bucks an hour. The secret to surviving is knowing what you don't need, and you, and you need Bloomington. Bloomington. It's, it's in your blood, coagulating your motivation as it massages your soul. You know what will happen? And you will finally get a day off, because you've got to do something. And there will only be two movies worth seeing. Then you'll remember what I'm saying here was so conservative and infantile and how those were the best days of your life.
So as part of our never-ending program of uh, cultural edification, edification, ed education too, we wanted to present to you yet another vocabulary word. And this week's vocabulary word is sheepskin. 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 Oh. sheepskin. Now there's a word, sheepskin. Sheepskin. Sheepskin, of course, being a bomber word um, for, for, you know, the found, it, it's kind of like the, 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 uh, the creation myth of, of, uh, of Molly. So we already graduated. Me and Jay here. Yeah, yeah. Back in 91, 90, somewhere Somewhere, somewhere depending yeah. on... I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> it was so long ago. It's all you know. a haze. Yeah, yeah. It's all a blur looking back into the past. But you know, graduation continues to be meaningful to both of us. That's right, because here in Bloomington, uh, Indiana, the dumpsters around town are like a veritable cornucopia of goodies. Yes. At, yeah. at graduation time. Yeah that we can, re we can reap our little uh, garbage harvest right. every year. Because all the people who are graduated to just throw away everything that they have because they want to get out of here as quick as they possibly can, unencumbered by all the incrustations of worldly goods that they've, as it were, yeah, built up over the years, kind yes. of like a nautilus. Yeah, so <laughs> with, with, that, with that in mind, mind. we um, wanted to introduce Christy. Paxson, yes. our, your tour guide. Actually, to the dumpsters of Bloomington at this very special time of year, graduation. <laughs> Today we're going to go dumpster diving. Dumpster diving! You know, it's graduation. Uh, graduation is the best time to go dumpster diving. People just throw away just all kinds of valuables. They just want to get the hell out because they've graduated. They don't care what they throw away. And you know, we do care what they throw away because we might like it. We're ready to retrieve all their stuff and use it for ourselves. We're going to dumpster diving. We're going, we're going to dumpster diving. Best place to go is apartment complexes because there's a lot of people living in, you know, a pretty small space and they usually have big old bins of trash. So that's easier to, you know, more convenient for us to go through and I've got the perfect place. Now, Varsity Villas, this is one big old place that should have one... A lot of students packed in here like sardines in a tin can. That's right, and there should be dumpsters chock full of goodies. Oh, whoa, wallpaper, look at this, woo! Oh, cramity! We hit the proverbial jackpot! Graduation robe. Do, 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 I graduated for by you. I get this dome lamp. Thank you, Mom, Dad, grandparents, everyone that's helped me come this far. This is quintessential Varsity Villas art. This girl's a Bud Light She's gal. hot. There's a table and a chair. You know, it's legal to dig through trash as of, uh, I don't know, the 70s or something, during that Nixon uh, Watergate thing, yeah, they, yeah, they declared yeah. it legal. Hey, so. Christy, look. There's some mail. Well, Krista, let's just see what happened in your life. I'm in the middle of baking Halloween cookies to take to school tomorrow. Remember the furry black and white dog outfit we made for you? It seemed like every Halloween was either too hot or rainy for it. I'm looking forward to your next visit. Love, Mom. Wow. That's heartwarming. It really is, but I guess, you know, Krista didn't particularly care. Wait, it's wait, for what's that? Trash. What's that over there? A walk! With lid. Oh my god, a walk with lid? What fool threw this away? We got here just in time. Wow! Wow! I don't even have. Wow! Look at that, it's perfectly fine. I don't really know what this says or what this means. What does this mean? You know, all I need to do is, is uh, feel a carpet sample, and I could just put together, okay. It was a girl, she was blonde, fashion merchandising major from Chicago. Wait, don't get on that plane! Someone's gotta stop her! 
So, I guess that brings us to the end of our little program here. You can hear the bells toll. Two. That means that the Grim Reaper is coming for you, baby. And uh, so, so we'll you see you. that in mind. Yeah, and we'll see you next week on J&B on the Rocks. Congratulations. P Pat Nickel. Pat Doctor. Doctor Nickel. Nickel. My His mother. Father. My mother, the doctor. Honk, honk. <laughs> monster on the gazzy bow. Now don't do it just for the camera, okay? Do I don't think it would be worth it. Harry Potter, Harry Potter, man, don't step through the glass. <laughs> That? Just don't step in my drink. No, just kidding. Nice red, man. Hooray! Do you have anything to say for yourself? What is that in your nose? <laughs> God. Is it straight? Oh, Is it straight? <laughs> yep.